So having given you the high-level description of what Ant's Toolkit does, let's dig a little deeper and look at the structure of the Ant's capsule as well as the APIs provided by Ant's in order to do capsule processing. First of all, the header, as I told you, consists of three parts. The original IP header, which is important for routing the packet towards the destination if a node is a normal node, not an active node. And this is, of course, the payload that was generated by the application. And in the middle is this ANTS header. And there are two fields in this ANTS header that is particularly important. One is a type field. The other is a prev field. The type field is a way by which you can identify the code that has to be executed to process this capsule. And this type field is really an MD5 hash of the code that needs to be executed on this capsule. And we'll come back to that in a minute. And the second field that I said is important is the pre field. And this pre field is the identity of the upstream node that successfully processed the capsule of this type. And this information is going to be useful for us in terms of identifying the code that needs to be executed in order to process this capsule. We'll come back to how these two fields are actually used in processing a capsule once this capsule arrives at an active node. The short hint that I'll give you is that the capsule itself, as you see, does not contain the code that needs to be executed to process this capsule, but it only contains a type field, and this type field is a vehicle by which we can identify the code that needs to be executed to process this capsule. More on that in a minute. First, let's talk about the API that ANTS Toolkit provides you. The, the most important function that we want to accomplish using the ANTS Toolkit is forwarding packets through the network intelligently. So routing the capsule is the most important function that needs to be done, and that's most of what this ANTS API is all about. And that part is contained right here, saying that, well, route this packet in this manner and deliver the packet to an application. And this is the set of API calls that allows you to do routing of the, the capsule through the network. This is where what I said about virtualizing the network comes in. Regardless of the actual topology, physical topology, I can take routing decisions commensurate with the network flow requirements contained in the capsule that arrives at a node. So the second part of the API is API for manipulating what is called a soft store. Now soft store is storage that's available in every router node for personalizing the network flow with respect to a particular type of capsule. And I mentioned earlier that the type is only a pointer to the code, not the code itself. And the soft store is a place where we can store the code that corresponds to a particular capsule type. So the primitives that are available for manipulating the soft store are things like put object and get object. The soft store is basically a key value store. And in this key value store, you can store whatever is important for personalizing the network flow for capsules of this type. An obvious candidate for storing in the soft store is the code that is associated with this type. So you can store the code that is associated with this type so that future capsules of the same type, when it arrives at a particular node, they can retrieve the code from the soft store and execute the code that needs to be executed for processing capsules of this type. Other interesting things that you might put into the soft store are things like computed hints about the state of the network which can be used for future capsule processing for capsules of the same type. And the third category of uh, API that's available is querying the node for interesting tidbits about the state of the network or details about that node itself. For instance, what is the identity of the node that I'm currently at and what the local time is at this, no at this node and so on and so forth. So these are the kinds of things that are available. So the key thing that I want you to get out of looking at this ANTS API is that it is a very, very minimal set of API. So the number of API calls fits in this uh, little table here. So that's the idea. Remember that routers are in the public internet. And if you're talking about executing code in the router that is part of the public internet, the router program that we're executing at a router node has to have certain important characteristics. Number one, it has to be easy to program. Number two, it should be easy to debug, maintain, and understand. And number three, it should be very quick. 
because we're talking about routing packets, and so the router program should not take a long time to do its router processing. So the API, is very simple API, allows you to generate very simple router programs that are easy to program because the API is simple, easy to debug, easy to maintain and understand, and the program itself is pretty small that it's going to take not a humongous amount of time to do the packet processing. 